Hi, it's Georgia Lennon and I'm continuing on with our Family Law Alphabet series. This week we're going to be talking about words starting with the letter J and K. So starting with J, we're talking about judicial officers and K, I'll be speaking about a section of the Family Law Act called Section 90K, which provides for the circumstances in which a court may set aside a financial agreement or termination agreement. So let's start with judicial officers. Judicial officers is the broad, overarching term that effectively just describes judges and those people within the courts that have the capacity to make decisions. So in the family court, we have what's called um, judges, but we call them justices. That's the um, word we use to describe them. So that's the family court judges, we call them justices. Then we have judges in the Federal Circuit Court of Australia. And then we also have two others that you may not have heard before. They're called senior registrars and registrars. So in effect, what they are is a level under judge. Um, and usually they come from a background of having been a practicing solicitor themselves and they're very experienced in the area. So there's been a recent change as of, I think it was October last year, where there was a delegation of more powers to registrars and senior registrars of the court uh, so that they can make further decisions. In particular, senior registrars can make decisions at interim hearings, which we spoke about on the last occasion. Um, and those can make, uh, and such decisions can relate to, for example, interim parenting matters as to what's going to happen with the care arrangements for your children. Um, and or they can also make um, decisions with respect to some property interests on an interim basis, including spouse maintenance. So there, I guess, are four tiers. Um, the lowest, lowest tier of registrar is, in effect, um, they make more, I guess, administrative decisions, but they will be the ones that will also assist you in uh, conciliation conferences, uh, case conferences, which is where you have the registrar, the family consultant, both your lawyers, kind of like a mediated process. Um, and they're very experienced and essential in making the court process work. So it's great that we have all these different levels of individuals to assist you throughout the process. So that's judicial officers. Now moving on to section 90K of the Family Law Act. So you may recall that we spoke about financial statements or binding financial agreements at um, the beginning of this series. So financial agreements, you may recall, can be entered into um, at the start of a relationship and, or before you, in fact, enter into it, during the relationship or at the conclusion of your relationship. Now, court orders is your other option at, at those certain points upon separation. And court orders generally, um, at least in my view, are much harder to overturn. So what this section of the legislation, 90K, provides for is the ability to terminate, in effect, or set aside um, these financial um, agreements or the termination agreements attached to them. So when you, I guess, conclude a um, financial agreement, you can enter into a termination agreement that sets that aside, in effect. So the circumstances for setting aside, um, there's quite a few. So one of them is if the agreement has been obtained by way of fraud. Um, and that can include, really importantly, the non-disclosure of a material matter. So one of the things that I know a lot of clients get sometimes frustrated about is, well, why do I have to provide all these documents? This is our agreement. It is what it is. Sure, that may be the case. However, to protect yourself, if you really want this agreement to stick, you must ensure that there is disclosure of all these things so that can, there can be no assertion later on that um, you haven't actually disclosed that you've got you know, 100K in that bank account day that you didn't otherwise um, let us know about. So that's one of the reasons. Um, another reason is that you've entered into the agreement or the other party has for the purpose of defrauding someone, um, in particular, either a creditor or a spouse. So say, for instance, you're in a de facto relationship um, and the other person's married, you've entered into that to, in effect, try and remove some of that person's ability to make a claim. Um, another reason is if the agreement is void, voidable or unenforceable. So that generally relates to some of the ways in which the agreement is drafted. Again, a good reason to not enter into these agreements without specialist family law advice. Another reason is if it has become impractical, imp impracticable in the circumstances that have arisen since the agreement was drafted. So that may be, for example, a common one that we've often seen with agreements drafted by um, other firms a long time ago. Clients will come to us and say, hey, I have this, I want to enforce it, um, but it's in relation to a property that that party since sold and the agreement hasn't provided for circumstances as to what happens when that property gets sold. Um, so 
that's a really tricky one, but unfortunately it's a little bit common. So you've got to be careful when drafting these agreements in the first place to provide for flow and effects as to those things to ensure that the agreement can always be practical and can always be carried out irrespective of the structuring of the assets or the things that happen in your life. Now, one of the other things is unconscionable conduct um, from a party entering into it. Another one is, and probably a really another important one, is a material change in circumstances has occurred. Um, normally, this would relate to the care, welfare, or development of a child um, in relation to that relationship or marriage. Um, and that impacts upon the caring responsibilities of the parent with whom um, that, that person has primary care. Um, so if, for example, the agreement would result in a hardship to that person in the way that it's drafted and it hasn't contemplated having kids, um, then that is another reason in which the court could set aside um, the financial agreement. So setting aside a financial agreement doesn't just happen. It's not just by way of you know, arguments between people. There has to be an application to the court for that purpose, of course, unless both parties agree and enter into a termination agreement. If you do want to set it aside and the other party doesn't agree, you have to make an application to the court um, by way of Section 90K um, and satisfy at least one of those reasons that I spoke about.